Hey everyone and welcome, it's Peggy. This week I'm making a vase out of this, a small maple burl blank that I picked up at my local Rockler store. Here I'm removing the, the bark inclusions and I'll be filling those areas with the resin. Stick around and see how it turns out and don't forget to leave a comment to let me know what you think. And don't forget to subscribe and leave a thumbs up or a thumbs down. So I'm using tuck tape for the for the mold. Um, it didn't require a you know complicated mold or to use MDF or anything like that. Fortunately, it was the tape was was good enough where the inclusions, uh, the openings were on a flat surface mostly. And using total boat resin here with the medium hardener. Mixing up the resin, and this is uh, black diamond pig pigments uh, in the color named Battleship Gray. And then Cobalt Blue. Links to all of these will be in the video description as always, if you're interested in checking them out. It's hard to tell what colors are going to show through or are still be there um, once it's turned because I'm not sure even which side is up at this point. Taking the tape off and I'm already placing it uh, between centers. Finding center. If you haven't tried this center finding tool, um, it's very inexpensive and it is very, very handy to have around. So I have a spur center in the chuck and the live center on the other end. And as you can see on the edges, what I've done is just sort of sanded down the uh, uh, very pointed edges uh, just to make the, uh, the turning go a little bit faster and a little bit easier at first. Easier on the tools as well. Starting out at around 500 RPMs, this is the Carter and Sun roll gouge that you see me use most of the time. So I'm trying to uh, make it uh, round and make a, um, a foot or a tenon, and then I will re reverse it and I'll be able to speed up the lathe after that because it'll be more secure. I switched over to the Easywood tool, uh, number one hollower here for a few moments. As you can see, it's it's cutting through that resin pretty well. So trying to save or keep as much of the resin as possible. So I'm not trying to make it the vase very narrow. Just uh, want to make it uh, symmetrical, obviously, and uh, to a simple face shape, nothing fancy. The grain. Uh, on this piece is, is really beautiful and the resin is just enough really not to take away from that or at least that's the intention sanding starting at 80 grit and somebody mentioned in the one of the last videos um, that I was using a full sheet of sandpaper and uh, thought it was uh, a crime so I was just trying to make the sanding go faster. So you saw me use some Starbond CA glue there to fill some of the 
uh, pin holes in the resin. That always works very well. Wiped it off with denatured alcohol, and now I'm applying sanding sealer. I get asked a lot what kind of sanding sealer I use. Um, it is linked in the video description. It is uh, Zinsers brand. You can buy it at uh, Home Depot or probably other home stores as well. It just happens to be where I get it. Uh, this is a, a quadruple aught uh, steel wool pad to denib the surface before applying the X abrasive paste. If you are interested in trying the Axe products, uh, there, it is linked, axewoodpaste.com, and you can save 10% off your order with code PF10. And a lot of people have commented about uh, using the code and uh, receiving the product and really liking it, which is not surprising because I love it. So this is the Axe Polishing Paste, and as you can see, it gives it a nice shine. Now starting the hauling process using a, um, a drill bit to start the to hollow out some of it. I'll start with this smaller bit and then I'll uh, use a Forstner bit next uh, to get out some more material. Using the smaller bit first just helps the Forstner bit uh, uh, work a little bit easier and stay sharp longer. And as you can see, the Forstner bit is doing a lovely job at removing a lot of material. You might notice there that I have a Forstner bit extension. That's always helpful when, when doing vases especially. And now just continuing the hollowing process, uh, this time with uh, hand tools. This is the Easy Wood Tool number one hollower. I will be going between this and the Carter and Son bowl gouge and the Carter and Son's uh, skew chisel. If you watched my last video, you know that I have a bet with my brother. Uh, 100 bucks says that I, he says I can't, I say I can get to 20,000 subscribers uh, by Halloween 2020. So, if you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button. It would really help me out and maybe help me get a hundred bucks for my brother. And if you already are subscribed, thank you. Uh, click that thumbs up button. It'll let uh, the YouTube algorithm know that people are watching and liking the video and YouTube will in turn show it to more people. So that helps too. So thank you in advance. I do appreciate it. Using the X uh, abrasive paste on the inside, same process, except uh, using this uh, complicated method of uh, getting all the way in the vase. I know there are tools you can buy to uh, to make that a little bit easier. I obviously don't have them. So using some spray lacquer for the final finish on the outside. This is the Watco brand gloss finish. I don't always use this, but it did seem appropriate on this uh, particular piece. I ended up putting on about four coats. 
And the last thing I have to do is take off that tenon, which I do off camera. And then put my logo on the bottom. Call it done. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. Please like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. And until next week, peace out. Oh yeah, and there are photos coming out. Don't forget. <laughs>